would you like to uh, respond to that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that is Shirin Barucha. She is also the co. Yeah, yeah. We'll just get your mic one second. I wanted to mention two things. One is that the footfall in the cross Maidan and in the Horniman Circle is about three to 5,000 people a day. Hmm? In the Oval Maidan, I cannot count them. There are, there are many more than that, especially on a holiday. And the reason given that, you know, uh, we closed municipal gardens for this particular time because uh, there is uh, drug peddlers, there is encroachment, homeless, uh, all sorts of vagrants. We face them all. How do we do it? We do, they will come in during your working hours, won't they? Why would they wait to uh, stay out because you shut the garden for a period of time? We look after them, and it is only by attrition, by constantly saying that this, this cannot happen here, this drug dealing will not happen here, this drinking will not happen here, and our guards look after that, if necessary, with the help of the police. Then, by attrition, we find that there is a certain discipline among the people and how well Horniman Circle is used. Every single office around there comes there with the, the poorest of the poor, the clerks come there to have their food. That picture that you saw was not uh, people, uh, that's the reader's corner in Horniman Circle, which is open at night till 12 midnight for students if you have a passport. Because they were reading by the lamplight of the Asiatic steps and so they came into our garden and which we permit them. I, I feel that the excuse that the costs rise because you keep it open all the time is not acceptable to the citizens. We private trusts manage it and you are the richest municipality in this country, am I right? In the world, I Maybe, thank you. Maybe you would like to share some costs with us yeah, between both yeah. of you and that, that could you give know, an idea. You uh, know, uh, we've been doing this, uh, Horniman Circle has been looked after by the trusts for the last 30 odd years. Um, and uh, Cross Maidan is of course very, very young compared, it's you know, since 90, about 2005. And an oval from 1997. And we had decided that we would keep it open at all times. And uh, yeah, we don't charge a fee, though Cross Maidan and Horniman, we are allowed to buy the Cross Maidan by the collector's office and Horniman by the municipal corporation. But we decided not to because it was more of a hassle to collect fees than to. And we felt that in principle it was wrong because we wanted everybody, even the little chokra boy who lives in the hutment, to be able to come there and play on the swings and the slides, which they do most happily. And they're always in, in the Maidan. And so we just don't close it. It opens at about Oval at 6, uh, Horniman at 8, Cross at 8, Oval closes at 10, and Horniman at uh, 8, but open to students with valid uh, IDs till midnight to come and study, and Cross at 8. Um, and it's worked very well. We've had a lot of problems, particularly in the Cross Maidan. Uh, a, maybe because it's new, we have a lot of drug addicts, well, so did Oval. I mean, Oval used to be full because they came from the city civil court. They used to be let out from there and they used to come into the Oval Maidan. And they were constantly uh, either puffing or even selling. And the student colleges are around. So in the early years, we had a tussle. But there was no question of closing it. Oval, of course, one, there was no question because it's a central path and people walk up and down. You know, it's a thoroughfare. But even for Cross and Horniman, we never closed it. The police were very helpful always. Our security is are constantly in touch with them. They call them because we've told our people, that's one thing, the security must not confront the drug addicts because the drug addicts carry knives. and They're very, very threatening. So it, you have to manage it. And as Shirin said, you know, they get used to it. They see the people using it happily, nicely. They are not going to come and start creating trouble. We have a lot of drunks for some reason in Cross Maidan. In fact, we're going to... We've asked the uh, police to check if there are any uh, hooch addas close by because they're constantly there. And two or three of them have died in the Maidan, to our horror, you know. But uh, again, that's all spa for the course. The security is there. That is the single most expensive element in our maintenance cost is the cost of security guards. And when I was part of this, you know, the expert committee on open spaces, the BMC people had said at that time, Mr. Asim Gupta was the 
a digital municipal commissioner then, that we don't have the money, uh, we can't afford security guards, to which Mr. Asim Gupta said that we have plenty of money, and if that's, the, that's what you need, we should do it. We should get security and keep the gates open as, you know, from like eight, six in the morning when the people come walking. You have a lot of students who go to school late. You have a lot of students who have morning shift college, uh, schools, morning shift colleges. Uh, they all, we have to cater to all of them. So the gardens are always full. We have people having lunch. We allow them to eat. We allow them to sleep. As long as they're not sleeping in the, in the shrubbery, which they <laughs> might demolish, the security tells them, Idhar mat so jao, jara aage ja ke so jao. And we on, always insist, please pick up the paper you're sleeping on and put them into the litter box. Don't litter the place. That's the one thing which we have to keep educating everybody. And our gardeners and our Mali and our security guards are constantly doing that. That too changed in the Oval. After many years, the litter is much less. People are using it better. People come and play cards, you know, on their way home from office. They're not gambling. They're just, it's a little get together from office, spend half an hour, one hour, and then catch the train home. And I think it's a wonderful sight to see them. They are so happy doing that. So I, you know, I don't want to labor on this point, but there is no, there is no question of not keeping uh, all the gardens in the, in the city open from morning to evening. We unfortunately, like, unlike in Amsterdam, we can't keep it open at night because we have a lot of antisocial elements. Our population is very vast and it's difficult. So at night, you just do have to close the, I mean, because in the Oval, we had a lot of prostitution. I mean, we had a major, major problem because it's so vast that any pocket, any corner, you know, it gets dark and there's just, it, it's, the police told us, please close it, please close it. So we close it at 10 o'clock at night. And um, I, I, I do think that this is uh, something which is absolutely essential. We've had problems in Cross because we have a lot of hutman dwellers on one side, and we are constantly battling, and the ward office and the police are, you know, they come through the, ba the children come through the little gates, and they use them, as Karishma said, you know, for defecation and all, so we have, we've had to put chicken wire to close that, unfortunately, because we can't allow them in, and then their chickens and hens started coming in. So when we told the ward officer, they said, what are you saying, ma'am? I said, I'm telling you. So he, they went and said, if you don't take the we will take them and take them. So <laughs> they got rid of them. But we have a lot of livestock. There was a goat also once. So you, you know. <laughs> so, but this is all, if you're looking after a garden, and if that's what makes you, you know, makes the trust. I mean, that's what we, was, we set out ourselves for. I think it's a wonderful experience, and we are quite happy doing it. And I think it's worked as a very, very good example for the rest of the city yeah. to uh, look after. For the moment, I, I just want to add one thing. Mr. Srinivas, you talked about what, wetlands. These lakes that you are... Are you having a buffer zone around them, a kind of? Because I think that's necessary, otherwise you'll have people camping on the a buffer zone around each lake that you revitalize. I'll respond now. No, we do, we do keep buffer zones. Yeah. You do, yeah. yeah. Because uh, otherwise, you know, there are people just clamping uh, right yeah. at the edge. And so you need to have that buffer, which again becomes a public open space, like a garden. It becomes, so that's another way of augmenting your uh, open spaces. So thanks Thank a lot. I think that was very valuable. I'll invite some comments from Mr. Rawat also, but Karishma is correctly reminding me that I forgot to s completely the opening of the report and distribution yes. has been skipped. <laughs> so if possibly we can yeah. do that, do that and and <laughs> then we can quickly start with that. Uh, Sundaraji, we missed the, we missed the <laughs> release of the report and distribution. <laughs> so the, the, I think the conversation was more gripping. Come, come this side, so we can all... You can be there. Where is our friend? Some photographs. Where is uh, Abhishek? Yeah. 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 Dear friends, I'm glad that uh, Mr. Srinivas talked about uh, not closing the gardens. 
so that the gardens are visible at least from the outside. And we are fortunate in Ginoth Ward to have Shivaji Park as one playground which doesn't have a garden. It has got a what you call a parapet wall or a katta on which you can sit 24 hours of the day. Probably 25th hour also you can stay <laughs> sleep there. But uh, uh, the irony is, it is that there is no caretaker for Shivaji Park. It is not adopted by anybody. It's an orphan. One of the reasons that it is orphan is that the entire playground has been divided into 37 subplots and they are given on vacant land tenancy basis to different sports clubs or some organizations. And none of them look after them well. With the result, and of course for Shivaji Park there are many claimants as Mr. Srinivas knows that some political parties and all that thing, uh, or Republic Day Parade or May Day Parade, uh, Maharashtra Day Parade, so all these things are there. But because of that, because it is an orphan, everybody comes and puts some earth in there and because it becomes loose. With the result, today there is dust pollution problem in Shivaji Park. And I think that uh, municipality, if it looks at it, always says that it is not an obligatory duty of the corporation to look after public open spaces, because it is one of the discretionary duty. But I would like to tell all the activists, it is not really true. Because in 1994, we have got an amendment in the Municipal Act, and it is an obligatory duty of the corporation to have urban forestry, to have protection of environment, and also ecological aspects of, uh, should be looked into by the corporation. And this is very much connected with the health, which is another obligatory duty of the corporation. And therefore, what I'm saying that dust pollution is a part of the environment. It affects the health of the young <laughs> players who come there. So instead of looking at it as an orphan, it should be looked, I'm, I'm talking about all open spaces, all open spaces, if they are being used as playgrounds, they should be sprinkled with water at least. No lawn, nothing uh, extraordinary is required, but only sprinkling of water is required. Now I'm taking Shivaji Park has got such a contrast. On one hand, Shivaji Park is open from all, all sides, but there are two small gardens. One is meant for uh, kids, another is meant for nana nanis, two different generations. But they are having fences. Yeah, inside. They are inside Shivaji Park. And there are seven clubhouses, which have been, uh, uh, except for Scout Pavilion, all others are on vacant land tenancy basis. And they are also having fencing, and fencing which is objectionable to Mr. Srinivas. Because nobody can look into inside what is happening inside. So I think as far as Shivaji Park is concerned, yeah, because they have put some obstructions and you cannot see through. So this is what is happening. And this may be happening in all the open spaces, and that's why I'm pointing it out. Because one of the first things you should do is, you can put the fence to protect, but somebody should be able to see inside what is going inside. Because then, if there is something objectionable thing going on inside, that also will be known to the public. Because public will be auditing 24 by 7, because if that is available. At this, what I'm te uh, telling you about Shivaji Park now, I'm sharing something else. It is Dhote Udyan, which is opposite Hindu Hinduja Hospital. That is managed by a trust. It is on adoption basis. And because it is on adoption basis, it is not an orphan. But it is looked after very well. And from where the money comes for this trust? Because you have seen the experience of the Oval Trust and the uh, other trust, uh, Cooperage Trust. There, some industrialist as, uh, as CSR obligation is looking after the expense. As far as this Dhote Udyan is concerned, the Chris, which is Kredangan Sangopan Samiti, it gets, it has got permission by the corporation to put some eight plaques there where the sponsors, ca uh, it can be acknowledged that this is maintained by that. That is being done by Camlin Limited today and whatever they are paying, 
the entire expense of the entire year is made by that. Now, this is a model where a community is adopting a particular thing. Corporation allows some sort of acknowledgement for the sponsor. And I think it is also happening in Avan because at one end, there is an acknowledgement uh, oval. It is happening. So that acknowledgement is also enough for some organizations who have got the CSR uh, you know, funding with them, and they are able to meet it. I think instead of going in for caretaker basis and adoption basis and creating private interest in the public open spaces, this is a model which can be looked into that community looks after it. And community is empowered by allowing the sponsors to put the plugs at uh, different places. I think this model can be, uh, of course, how it will be taken by the elected representatives, I don't know. Because I can tell you, if you look at the entire Mumbai, then the non-buildable open spaces, which are recreation ground, playground, and and gardens, and parks, they are non-buildable. You cannot build anything. But you will find 13 of such open spaces we have lost to private interest because some clubhouse is built. And they don't allow the public to access it. You are, you are talking about accessing it during the afternoon between 10 and 4. I am saying these are not accessible at all to the public because the private interest is created. And this is something which is non-buildable public open spaces, which are recreation ground, playground, garden, and parks. No private interest should be created as a matter of policy by the corporation. And this is something which is important. More severe and, and RG, I think. Yeah. More severe and RG. Yeah. No, no. In fact, even if de today's development plan, 1991, and what is proposed is also allowing that, that should be changed. In fact, RG, PG, parks and gardens, and in fact, there is time we can write to activists, can write to Mr. Zha and say that as far as RG is concerned, there should not be interchangeability of public open spaces as far as this non-buildable thing is concerned. There is another thing I would urge the activists to say, that SRS scheme, if there is an encroachment of slums, can come on RG, PG, garden, and parks. That also we should ask the government to change that particular thing. And we cannot increase the open spaces. But at least, as Mr. Srinivas said, we must preserve what we have. If we preserve what we have, even if it is encroached, because there are many ways you can give them alternate accommodation in some other plots. But at least preserve that particular thing. And I think there is no government representative today, but uh, if uh, urban development department representative was there, this is the thing to be taken into account. That we do not want to lose the open space, which are already designated as public open spaces. That is RG, PG, parks and gardens. I, I'm go going a little further. I wanted to share, Mr. Srinivas, one good thing about Shivaji Park. In Shivaji Park, what happened? Now, there are many things that uh, in the presentation, Rishi excellently said. There are people who are objecting to couple having privacy in the open parks. Because of that, our elected representative said that in Shivaji Park, we must have bright lights. And we had bright lights. But what is the outcome of that? Good outcome is that Till 12 o'clock today, the footballers play there. Otherwise, it was reserved for cricket. Now, you are saying that space, space should be used by different people? Now, this is being used for different sports. And this is something which I appreciate because municipalities spent a lot of money on all those four high power, high mass, this thing. And it has produced really good results. With the result that in some of the place, and there is no security. In Shivaji Park, there is no security. Even then, there is security for the youngsters to play there till uh, midnight. I think that is one uh, this thing that high must uh, bulbs will help even if security is less. If security is enough, and uh, as Mr. Asim Gupta had told uh, uh, Naina, there is enough uh, funds with that. And I think Mr. Srinivas also must be enjoying enough funds. The security guards can be kept 
in order that the place is not misused. In fact, uh, I would like to quickly flag off that funds is a big issue. We've also filed one RTI as part of the thing with K West Ward. And uh, one of the recommendations in the report clearly is that the website should clearly divulge the BMC website. What is the kind of money available with the garden department? What is being expenditure, security? Because there are a lot of heads, but as usual, it's a bit com confusing to go through when the data comes out in RTI. But that's another issue which we are flagging off. If it can be. Sure. Question. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of. Yeah. Yes. Um, hi, my name is Sarfraz Momin, and I've worked on two development of two big open spaces in Mumbai with ORF um, as an urban designer and also as a citizen of Mumbai. We, we are very passionate about open spaces. Uh, I have a couple of comments about Shivaji Park, and the, Shivaji Park has been cited as one of the most successful examples for using open spaces in our reports. Uh, that's what we said that it doesn't have an edge. It 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 has in fact no boundary wall that separates the park from the people and the transition is a kata, which is the most equitable and democratic uh, way of treating the edges of our park. Uh, that is one of the most successful uh, things. And two is lighting, which like rightly pointed out has changed the entire, because I've used it at 11 at night and I really cherish that portion of it. Uh, when it comes to children's garden and security, there is, in urban design, we call it, um, there is a philosophy in which you say, if there are people, there is security. If there are no people, if you keep people out, there are no eyes on streets or parks. Uh, in that sense, also, security guards come with their own sort of uh, issues that I also see. One was when I was taking my three-year-old daughter to the same toddler park that you're talking about in Shivaji Park. Uh, there were five kids standing outside. And the watchman wouldn't let him in, uh, let them come in. And they were like, Uncle, bolo na inko. And uh, it's like, kya problem hai? Ye jeb kat rahe And uh, I said, that's not fair. I'll, take a, I'll keep an eye on them. You let them inside. So they'd walked all the way from Mahim Church. They were obviously uh, kids from the slums who'd come in. And, uh, and guards have their own way of, uh, you know, key. yes, judging people. Uh, the same thing with uh, the same garden in front of Hinduja Hospital. I stay very close to that too. Where the guard would constantly run after kids, whistling, saying that you're not allowed to do this here, you're not allowed to do that. And um, it's something that we must, security is one issue that we must sort of uh, target and approach in a different way because creating these high walls and fences uh, is uh, there are better innovative ways to, in fact, look at security. So, yes, real threat and there is paranoia. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I will exactly. respond to that once yeah. you finish. Right. Yeah. So these are these are some of the things that we've tried to experiment at at uh, uh, Azad Maidan and Agas Kranti Maidan, where we're talking about removing the fences completely and and seeing what what all with good lighting and good design, uh, it can be done in the same amount of money where people take care of the open spaces. And I understand Oval, with one side has a residential colony and the other is largely dead at night. But in Shivaji Park, it's completely surrounded by people and the community can take care of the open space given that they're empowered with good design and, and strategies, so. Uh, we had a lot of problems with people <coughs> like Sarkras who's objected to the Oval. The reason that it had to be fenced was, uh, as I said, we had a huge amount of uh, drug addicts, prostitution, etc. But apart from that, we have seven cricket pitches on it. And there is the, the pitches nobody touches, but the outfields. And you had the public walking right through. And like in the hills, you have pagdandis going. You had these furrows, entire maidan full of it, with the result the cricket uh, the, the clubs that played cricket there had terrible outfields. The minute we fenced it and we made this fence, which is also designed by the Heritage Committee, that became the kind of a benchmark now for other fences, which is a see-through. The, out, the outfields are beautiful now, and yet people come in and they sit there. 
nobody is stopping people from coming in. Cross Pendan, we have another problem. We have a huge colony of hutmans. And they even today, with the fence encroached, during monsoon, if you go now, they have put their that blue tarpaulin, they put their kattas, you know, what is it called, pegs, right into the maidan to tie it. And you, you can't get rid of it, you know, because the minute you get rid of it, the next day they do it again. If he didn't have the fence, they would have been squatting in the maidan. No, they, they would have. The, the children do come. They come. They come and they come, no the approaches, no, this is the reality of Bombay. We have a lot of encroachment. They are allowed to come in. They come in through the, we say, gate ke andar ao, aap khelo, aap baitho, aap khao. Lekin aap apna ghar andar mat basao. You know, and, and for that security, you know how much it costs us to look after cross medan is a lakh and 30,000 a month. And oval medan is a lakh and 50,000 a month. And 90% of that money is in security. And without that, we would not have been able to uh, succeeded in maintaining those gardens the way they are and keeping them open from morning to evening, uh, morning to night. So, you know, there are certain things that you have to, it's very idealistic. When I grew up at the Oval and Shireen, we had just those two pillars with a chain link. Those were different days. Those were different days. You know, we are, this was about, Many decades ago, I won't say how many, but uh, <laughs> yeah, and then it, 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 it became a mess. The state government couldn't do anything about it. They tried, it didn't succeed. And in 97, we took it over to restore it and maintain it, and we still maintain it since 97. And it's only because of the feds that we were able to keep at least some discipline within the Maidan. Yeah, yes, really, but then should we also quickly release this? There are a lot of people in the audience. We, we should actually, uh, so can we? So Mr. Shinivas also has to leave. So quickly, can we have some more comments? And then maybe he can respond. Yeah, Sonal, please. Please introduce yourself and uh, the work you do. And yeah. Hi, my name is Sonal Alvaris. I work with eConnect Knowledge Foundation. Uh, we offer awareness and training programs on environment. So I must congratulate uh, Rishi and the team at ORF. A perfect uh, team to pick something that is greatly required in a space-starved city of ours. I want to also congratulate the BMC now. I don't know how many of you know, but you have done a fantastic job on a sewage treatment plant, which is now a garden. So my immense, you know, I'm so grateful for such a beautiful, it's on Tulsi by Broad, have you? It's called Pramod Mahajan for some reason. <laughs> I won't dive in. <laughs> but it's, you won't be able to recognize that it was formerly a sewage treatment plant. I would urge everyone to go there. I do certainly hope that the parks are open for longer and they're more accessible to a lot more of the public because what our work does is bring people back into connection with nature. And so we dearly want more time to do it in. So I do hope Rishi and your team will extend your research in the next one maybe to uh, open spaces which need to be converted into parks for instance and that mm. would uh, then therefore not allow encroachment. That's right. my suggestion. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. I think. In fact, we are, uh, there are a lot of suggestions which have come in during the day and like you said, we should make some kind of a working group uh, to be able to because... Uh, Can Pratima, you want to add something? You've been working, doing some good work recently, and your experiences. Congratulations, because you know uh, it's it's you know such simple things that can essentially dramatically transform how we live. Uh, I live down the street from Joggers Park, so it'd be great to sometimes just walk there and go to work. You know, go to work in the middle of the day, and I think it. Uh, it's a very simple idea, but a really transformative one. And I want to congratulate ORF for, uh, you know, doing this for the city.
going on. Up sixty percent work is completed. And second is Malad. Those of you from Malad, I don't know, but they are going to do a new garden about uh, ten days back. It's a rose garden. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. First one. Can we give the mic? Okay, there also. Yeah. You know. You know of uh, sir, a friend of mine in London. We were having a discussion on uh, groundwater. And he's saying that uh, it seems there's a policy in London that if a building comes down, no building comes up. That means that space is left open because that we need groundwater. So I, I don't know how far that is true, but that's what he made. He made a statement like that. Okay. I, I guess the real estate prices over there would not be no different from no, Bombay. Uh, I mean, even if it is not true, but it's the idea, um, I think, makes sense. Philip, you want to respond to that? We have Philip over here representing London. <laughs> That's not true. Um, <laughs> so, Joking. Two, two very quick points um, which connect in with what Mr. Srinivas was saying. And firstly, congratulations on the um, report. I think it's a very important exercise. I'm very glad people are doing it. Coming from Europe, it amazes me that some of the wonderful parks and gardens in Mumbai are closed for most of the day. It's inconceivable that would happen in many countries. The two points I want to make, you rightly gave a list of reasons, objections to opening in the middle of the day. And I understand that people might feel they're validly held reasons, but often there is just inertia. Certainly at Padwadan Park in Linking Road in Bandra, near where I stay, when the park is open, there is a guard there and you can go in. When the park is closed, the same guard is there telling you you cannot go in. So it, 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 there is no sensible rationale, at least for that park, um, for that. The same guard is there as being employed, and I don't understand it. Se secondly, to, to link in very much with, with what Mr. Srinivas was saying, I, I think it is important that access to parks can be more, and that's really advantageous when not much money needs to be spent on it for for all the, the logical reasons. And one thing that surprises me very much is related point about parks and gardens in Mumbai. So there's often only one access point to a garden, a park. One entrance, entrance is the same as the exit. And so you have to go in and out of the same way and that makes the park much less useful. It means you cannot cross the park to get from one place to another. You just have to go for a destination by itself. That leads to the park being used very much less. <laughs> Shiwaji is, 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 is a good, great park because it's not. But even places, Horniman Circle is a, is a wonderful park. But there, there are two gates which are open. There are four gates around Horniman Circle. The north and south side, they're always locked. I've never quite understood why that is the case. But I think if fences have to be there, having more access points to parks and gardens is very good. It, it really increases the connectivity and the utility of them. Thank you. Uh, Philip, that's a very good point, I think. Uh, uh, one or two more comments. Yeah, Karishma, you wanted to add something. Uh, so when we went to meet uh, Naina and Shirin, and, uh, Naina had uh, told us that uh, there's a rainwater harvesting system at uh, Oval Maidan. So I think that is a fantastic idea, and there are so many gardens, and we can actually adopt. If not other buildings, we can start with the gardens. Because, you know, it's an open space and so much water you can... Yeah, we put in a rainwater harvesting system because we... We get, we were getting, we still get the BMC water for about an hour in the evening, and that was not enough. And besides, it's portable water, and we felt that using portable water for the garden is really not because Bombay doesn't have the concept. Like in Delhi, you have kacha pani, pakka pani, but here it's just the same water. So we put in this, um, and it's funny, you know, how people are willing. The 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 the, the sponsor who came to us, we said, no, no, you will not agree to our terms and conditions because we don't want any placards or uh, whatever you call them, hoardings, saying this is work that you have done here. Provided you agree to that, we will let you do it. So they said, no, no, we want to do it and we will not have a single placard put up. And this company was Coca-Cola, who is notorious for putting up their... Uh, so they did it and we said, okay, we will test it for one year and then we will give you a plaque. They agreed to that too. And we've got a very good ha water harvesting system with an underground tank and bores where the water goes and four ring wells. And it's servicing the whole Maidan, you know, till uh, in the dry weather when uh, the other water gets dried up. And we have, we have a similar bore in Horniman Circle. So we don't draw uh, more water, portable yeah. water. Yeah. We'll take quickly yeah. cost of one comment and then yeah. uh, Mr. Kulkarni, I'll invite to give close. One last quick comment because then he has to leave. Hey, Avishana here. 
Uh, in fact, I would like to compliment uh, <coughs> BMC for maintaining two of the oldest gardens. This one, one is the Kamla Nehru Park and the Firucha Mehta Garden. I think which are maintained by BMC only and they are really maintained in a very good condition. In fact, I am very happy, you know, that they have maintained it without any help. If they can maintain those two, I am not this thing, why they want help in other. You know, they definitely can maintain even yes, others. Okay, yeah. Very, very beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I think BMC definitely can maintain other of these things yeah. uh, better uh, without, you know, adoption and mm -hmm. all that, you know, it's for this thing. Uh, my one point about this, you know, not related to the time, time restriction, but uh, there in the Firocha Mehta Garden, uh, you had put solar lights, okay. But what has happened over the period, they are not functioning. And I think so you know, this BMC has not done anything to do that, to... Mm -hmm put it because you know that will save a lot of electricity you know for the BMC that is one and the second is they had also put some light music you know which when you could take a walk you know there were small speakers which were fitted on the along the this one and which were really good you know now these such uh, small things you know can also make the parks some you people know, complained yeah. about that yeah. so. <laughs> no no they were very small yeah. speakers they were not and very, we have uh, very solar lights at Crossbell instru instru so yeah, instrumental music we, we have solar yeah. lights Thanks. No, we, I'll invite yes. Mr. Kulkarni. Uh, one, one moment. Okay. There's one point which he himself said it. I was going to tell about that. Right. Speakers around, I have used hanging gardens a lot. And I realized that I go there for peace. And I'm, I have to hear nice music. But I don't want to hear music. I would have peace. <laughs> so just because some people want, <laughs> Article 21, right to life, provides me the right to have peace. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, I'll invite Mr. Kulkarni, please.